Thank you so much, Pam. That was beautiful. Would you take your Bible, please, tonight with me and turn to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. We've been, uh, uh, on Sunday nights and on Wednesday nights, we've been talking about, we've been looking at the book of Daniel, and we found that the first part of Daniel is all about history and what happened, and the latter part of Daniel is about prophecy and what is going to happen. Daniel had been reading the word of God, he had been reading Jeremiah, and he found that there was only 70 years that the children of Israel were supposed to be in captivity. And the end of that 70 years was coming quickly. There was about two more years and the 70 years would come to an end. And so uh, Daniel was seeking God about this matter. And as he was fasting and praying and seeking the Lord, the Lord sent a servant of his. God sent the angel Gabriel. Now there have only been five, four other times that Gabriel has been presented, was presented a message in Scripture and one of them was to Mary, and one of them was to Joseph, and uh, two of them were to Daniel. And so when Gabriel is sent with the message, it must be mighty important message that that message be sent in a perfect way. And so Gabriel tells Daniel that he has been sent by the Lord to tell him what is, about, what is not only going to happen at that little point in time, in that end of those 70 years, but he's going to tell him what's going to happen all through history and down through the end of time. So when we look here at this passage in Daniel chapter 9, verse, beginning with verse 24, we're going to find what is going to happen in all, of, in all of time until Jesus comes. So would you stand with me as we read this precious word of God? Seventy weeks are decreed upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and discern that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild, to build Jerusalem unto the anointed one, the prince shall come, shall be seven weeks, and three score and two weeks. It shall be built again with street and moat, even in troublous times. And after the three score and two weeks shall the anointed be cut off, and shall have nothing, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and even unto the end shall be war desolations are determined. And he shall make a firm covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And upon the wing of ab abomination shall come one that maketh desolate, and even unto the full end, and that determined shall wrath be poured out upon the desolate. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word that you give to us. We thank you that you opened up the word to us that we might know what our future holds. And we might know what happens at the end. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be with me tonight as I share this prophecy. That, Lord, you would give me clarity and that I might speak with understanding so that your people might know exactly what Gabriel is saying to Daniel and what our future holds. We love you, God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So, Gabriel has come and he's come to give instructions about what's going to happen with 70 weeks of years. Now then, 70 weeks of years. So that means there's seven years in one week, right? So if you say seven times 70, then you come up with 490 years. Am I correct? Okay, so you come up with 490 years, and the 70 years of weeks we find here in the Scripture that it's talking about God's people. Who is God's people? Israel. And it's talking about God's city. Who is God's city? Okay, what is God's city? I'm sorry. So in other words, what we're doing, this is 70, 70, 490 years of, of that which is being talked about, the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Now then, in 445 B.C., 
I'm sure none of you are familiar with what happened at that particular time. Maybe there's a history buff here or so. But 445 B.C., Artaxerxes commanded Nehemiah to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. <clears throat> now this is important because the Bible says that you start these 70 years at the time that the commandment went forth to rebuild the city of Jerusalem, okay? So here's what it says in Nehemiah 2, 1 through 8. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, which is important, in the twelfth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up wine and gave it unto the king. Now this is Nehemiah that's doing this. Now I had not been beforehand sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but a sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, what city? Jerusalem, the place of my father's sepulcher, which is Jerusalem, which lieth in waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Then the king said unto me, For what doth you make this request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Jer Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulcher, that I may build it. What is it? Jerusalem. What he's wanting to do is he wants to build up Jerusalem. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be, and when shalt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given to me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over until I come unto Judah. Okay, so here we have Nehemiah chapter 2. We have then the month and the year of the beginning of the 69 weeks. You remember back up there in the scripture, it said that the seven weeks and then the 62 weeks, the, in other words, three score and whatever it was. Okay, let me go back. I'm sorry. It said it would start and there would be seven weeks, so seven times seven is what? Forty-nine. Seven times seven is forty-nine. And then there are three score and two weeks, which three score is sixty, and two weeks is two, so that would be seven plus sixty plus two is how many? Sixty-nine weeks. Okay, so Bible tells us that those 69 weeks would begin when the commandment went forth to rebuild Jerusalem. Now these 70 weeks that were, of years that we're talking about, we're talking about the city of Jerusalem and we're talking about the people of Israel. So we have then the beginning of the 69 years. 69 times 7 is 483 years, right? Right? Okay. So 69 times 7 is 483 years. But that's not right. Here's why it's not right. The Jewish calendar was a lunar calendar, so their calendar year was only 360 days, not 360 da 65 days like our calendar, our, our solar calendar is. So 360 days times 69 days, Ye, ye, weeks of years is 173,880 days. Everybody with me? I've not lost you, have I? Okay, so we're at 69 weeks, right? We're at 69 weeks. So in order to get our lunar, our solar calendar, we have to divide those many days by 365 days, and we come up with 476 years which brings us to 31 A.D. 
Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was led to the cross in 31 A.D. So the Bible tells us that from the, from the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the cutting off of the anointed one is going to be 69 weeks of years. Have you got that so far? Is God a good mathematician? Is God a good mathematician? Yes, he is. So here's what it means. It means that 70, the 70 years concerning the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem, 69 of those years have already been taken care of when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. Now then, there is one more week of seven that is left over, right? Because 69 from 70 leaves one. God gave Daniel a broader picture of the future than he could have ever imagined, not of just those 70 years of captivity. Gabriel gave to Daniel not just the time when the end of the present exile would come, but he gave them the time of the future events and the time of the end. So, there is a time between the 69th and the 70th week. Have you, have you followed me so far? There's a space between the 69th week, which was culminated at Christ's death on the cross when the anointed one was cut off, and then the 70th week, which is to come. We know that when the 69 weeks of years ended and that when Jesus was crucified, when the anointed was cut off, but something different happened after the 69th weeks of years were over, and that was the coming of the Holy Spirit. He came on the day of Pentecost, and he entered the life of every believer who believed in Jesus, which was different from the Old Testament. We know that in the Old Testament, the old Holy Spirit only came and visited in the lives of individuals. But in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in the life of God's people. He did not dwell in them, but since the day of Pentecost, now then, since we are in the time of the Gentiles, when anyone can be saved and receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we know that we are living in that space between the 69th and the 70th week. In the Old Testament, God made a temple for his people. But in the New Testament, God made a people for his temple. Did you get that? In the Old Testament, God made a temple for the people to come and worship. The temple represented God's presence. But in the New Testament, God has made a people for his temple. In other words, if the temple represents the presence of God, what do you represent today? You represent the temple of God. Your body is a temple unto God. You've been bought with a price, and the presence of God is with you. In the Old Testament, God was in the temple, but in the New Testament, God is in the people. Believers became the dwelling place of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now then, this time is called the time of the Gentile. How do we know that? Well, in Luke 21, 24, the Bible says... And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What is he saying? He is saying that that distance between the 69th week of years and the 70th week of years, that this is called the time of the Gentile. It is the time of the Gentile, Jesus says, so that all who will come to know Christ can come. What will be the end of the time of the Gentile and the 70 weeks of years? When will that begin? Well, I thought you'd never ask. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, listen to what the scripture says. For the mystery of lawlessness doth already work. In other words, the spirit of the Antichrist is among us. What is Antichrist? It's anything against the the doctrine and the values of Christ or the teachings of Christ. It's already in the world then. Only there is only there is one that restraineth now until he be taken out of the way. What did Jesus call us? 
He called us the salt of the earth. What does salt do? It preserves. Salt preserves. And if the salt is taken away, what happens? The meat spoils. And listen, there's only one who is restraining this evil one from being revealed and for doing his dastardly deeds upon the earth. Who is that one? It is the Holy Spirit of God who is going to be taken away by the Father. Now then, listen to this. Isn't this wonderful? If the Holy Spirit is taken away, where is the Holy Spirit today? He's in the temple. Where's the temple? In you and in me. So what's going to happen when the Holy Spirit is taken away? We're going to be taken away with him because we are his dwelling place. That is the rapture of the church. When Jesus comes in the clouds and the, oh, the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and so shall we ever go to be with the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Verse 8 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, And then shall be revealed the lawless one whom the Lord Jesus shall slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to naught by the manifestation of his coming. Who is the restrainer? Who is the one who is keeping the lawless one from being revealed and doing his evil beating? He is the Holy Spirit. And as I said, when the Holy Spirit leaves, we will leave as well. And the Bible says, Therefore comfort yourselves one another with these words. The time of the Gentile, the church age, will be over. And then the time of the Antichrist to appear will begin. And the lawless one will be sitting upon his throne. Remember, those 70 weeks that we talked about in the first part of verse 24 has to do with Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Those 69 weeks of years dealt with Israel and Jerusalem. This last week of years is going to deal with Jerusalem and the people of God. So, the last week of years is about Israel and Jerusalem and the Antichrist, who is the embodiment of sin and evil. The Jews will make a covenant in this last year period when the rapture of the church takes place. Then the Jews will make a covenant with this Antichrist. He will, they will make a seven-year covenant with him. This will begin the 70th week of years that is talked about, about the, Israel, the people of Israel and Jerusalem. This is the 70th week of years. The Antichrist will seem to the Jews as a very intelligent leader. He will be a very capable negotiator. He will even help the Jews to build their temple. He will promise them peace and safety. He will convince the whole world that he is the greatest thing that had ever happened to the world. And the whole world will follow after this beast. But listen, in the middle of the seven years, he will turn on the Jews. He will enter their temple and the Antichrist will declare himself as God. Jesus called it the abomination of desolation in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. The Jews at this point in time will suffer unspeakable atrocities under the devil-controlled beast. The Jews will suffer once again for the rejection of the Messiah, Jesus, when he came. They refuse the true Messiah, and now they will believe in the false Messiah, the Antichrist, that has come. While this is going on, at the same time, catastrophic happenings are going to be happening all around the world as told in Revelation. For example, hail and fire mingled with blood were cast upon the earth. One third of the trees were burned up and all the grass was consumed. Secondly, a great burning mountain was cast into the sea and a third part of the sea became blood. Thirdly, a star fell from heaven on the rivers of the earth and the waters became bitter, and many men died because of the bitter waters. Another illustration. The bottomless pit was opened, and smoke arose up out of the pit. 
the smoke was so vast that it darkened the sun and out of this smoke came demonic locusts like creatures. They had sting, stingers like scorpions and they were given power to torment, not to kill, but to torment humankind for a period of time. The Jews will suffer once again for the rejection of the Messiah of Jesus when he came. But guess what? Jesus will come and he will bring the end of sin. The Antichrist and the false prophet will be cast into hell and the recon reconciliation of all things will take place. When the Jews finally see Jesus and recognize him as the true Messiah that they pierced on the cross, they will recognize him as the Messiah and they will worship him. Listen to Romans 11, 25 and 26. For I would not, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceits, that a hardening in part hath befallen Israel until the fullness of the Gentile be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, even as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. When Jesus Christ comes at this point, he will come with the saints. He will come with those who are robed in white robes, and there won't be much fight that goes on at all except the sword that goes out from Jesus' mouth and slays the wicked. And then he will set up his reign of righteousness for a thousand years. The Antichrist and the false, pro the false prophet will be cast into hell with Satan, and Jesus Christ will reign with righteousness as it had been designed to be from the very beginning. So I want to say to you, what has happened? How do we know what is going on? Well, the angel Gabriel tells us that there's 70 years of wheat designed for the people of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. 69 of them have already taken place. The seventh year week, week of years is coming. And the only thing that's keeping the Antichrist from being revealed and to do his dastardly deed is the presence of the Holy Spirit which causes in us to be the salt of the earth. But when Jesus takes him away, he will take us with him and then the Antichrist will be revealed. The covenant will be made with the children of Israel and all havoc is going to break out here on the earth. I tell you what, I am thankful to God that he allows the church to be raptured up before the tribulation begins because it's not going to be a fun time. It is going to be a horrible time upon the earth. The Bible says, calls it the days of Jacob's trouble and there will never, has, there's never ever in the past nor will there ever be in the future a day like this that is so bad upon the people of the earth. God is reclaiming for himself. He is taking vengeance upon the sins of mankind and when he gets through, then Jesus will come in his might and great glory. And guess what? Peace shall rule in the earth. The lion, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb. The bear will graze with the cow. The baby will play at the hole of the adder. And guess what? Jesus will reign. And all the people said, Amen. I thank God. Now you may not have understood everything I said tonight. I just want you to know that God's written it down. It's going to be no surprise to God. He's already written it down in the future of what's going to take place and what's going to happen. And I believe that time is not too far in the near future. Amen? So what we need to be doing is we need to be getting ready and anybody we know that's not ready, we need to tell them about our Savior Jesus who is able to save us to the uttermost. God is good. Amen? And he is coming soon for his church, for his bride. And I hope that we're all be ready for that coming when he comes. Would you stand with me? I want you to sing with me, okay? We're going to sing what we sung this morning. And it's a beautiful song, and it talks about how the wonder of God is. 